My name is Ed Loftus. I'm a physician at Mayo Clinic and I'm chair of the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Interest Group here in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology. And I wanted to talk to you today about ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis is one of the two major inflammatory bowel diseases. And it's estimated that up to three quarters of a million people in the United States have ulcerative colitis. The cause for this condition is not entirely known. The leading hypothesis is that there is a genetic abnormality that causes a dysregulation or an abnormality in the way the immune system in the gut responds either to bacteria or something in the diet. And this results in inflammation, chronic inflammation in the large intestine. The large intestine consists of the rectum, which is the lower part, and the colon, the upper part. And when this gets inflamed, this can result in diarrhea, rectal bleeding, uh, rectal urgency, increased bowel movements, abdominal discomfort, fatigue. The diagnosis of ulcerative colitis is usually made by a colonoscopy with biopsies. Um, again, by definition, ulcerative colitis involves the large intestine, and colonoscopy allows us to do a direct visualization to uh, make sure we understand exactly how severe the inflammation is and how extensive it is. This might have implications on the types of medications that we prescribe. It's also important to exclude uh, complicating conditions or, or, or conditions that are associated with ulcerative colitis. So sometimes a person will come in with, with a flare of their ulcerative colitis, which is actually being driven by something else. For example, not uncommonly, we'll see a patient with coexistent celiac disease. So we don't just focus in on the colonoscopy. We take a look at the big picture, and we try to make sure we've, we've excluded associated conditions. Another complicating, uh, a complicating factor is the presence of an infection called Clostridium difficile colitis. And we've seen a rapid rise in this particular form of colitis, which is actually related to antibiotic use. The antibiotics alter the bacterial flora in the gut and allow bad bacteria that secrete a toxin which causes colitis to take over. And this can present as a flare of a person's ulcerative colitis. And when this occurs, uh, this can result in hospitalization or even colectomy. So again, we can't just focus with a tunnel view looking at the colitis per se, we have to exclude some of these associated or complicated, uh, complicating conditions uh, to get the big picture. Uh, we closely rely on a collaboration with radiologists here at Mayo who uh, have developed some cutting edge diagnostic procedures. Uh, for example, CT enterography or MR enterography these are much more sensitive ways at detecting inflammation in the intestine, especially in the small bowel. And we've found this to be very helpful in evaluating patients with IBD. MR enterography is a newer radiation-free alternative to CT enterography, and we're increasingly using that as well. We have a close collaboration with our GI pathologists. These are the doctors who read the biopsy slides under the microscope to help us solidify the diagnosis. We have a, a several of, of these pathologists on our staff, and basically all they do all day is look at biopsies, so they're very good at distinguishing between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Um, oftentimes when people come to our clinic, uh, they'll come in on a Monday, and over a rapid period of time, usually two to three to four days, we can complete a battery of tests and see them back the same week uh, with, with a global overview of what we think is going on with their inflammatory bowel disease right then and there. And we can often get them in to see the uh, necessary uh, consultants in other specialties if necessary.